Hello all. I welcome you all on this platform and I am here to discuss with you a very important topic that is gender and value education. And I am Dr. Rashmi Singh, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, SS Khanna Girls Rugi College. It is a constituent college of the University of Allahabad and below this, I, it is my email ID. You can contact me on this mail and we are gathered here to discuss a very important and relevant topic that is gender and value education. What is the connotation of gender? What can uh, anyone understand by the term value? What is the importance of value education? What is the relationship between gender and value and all? Okay. So, first of all, gender. Gender refers to the socio-cultural definition of man and women. Means, it is the basis, it is, its genesis lies in the society and its cultural uniqueness. The way societies distinguish men and women and assign them social roles. Gender is socially constructed role, behavior, activity and attribute that a given society considers appropriate for men and women. Means it is the, uh, the, basic, the basic construct of gender is appropriateness that has been defined by the particular society and it is distinct for men and different for women. Behavior that is compatible with cultural expectations is referred to as gender normative. Means if you are behave in a manner that has been set appropriate for you, then you are gender normative. Behaviors that are viewed as incompatible with these expectations constitute gender non-conformity. Unlike sex, the gender identities of men and women are determined psychologically and socially. Means gender has no biological origin. Gender roles and expectations are learned through the process of socialization. We all have uh, knowledge about the term socialization. Then <clears throat> Anne Oakley, who was among the first few feminist scholars to use this concept, opines. What, has it, what it has been said? Gender is a matter of culture. It refers to the social classification of men and women into masculine and feminine. That is, it is the concept of gender which has turned man into masculine character and woman into feminine character. She concludes that gender has no biological origin as we have already said and that the connections between sex and gender are not really natural at all. It has been superimposed over man and women to behave like masculine and feminine characters. Gender determines what is expected, allowed and valued in a woman or man in a given context. The internalization of gender is both a psychological process and social process. In psychological processes, there are individual characteristics of students, psycho-intellectual profile of them, interests and abilities of the uh, each student. And in social process, it is permanently built into the social interactions in which the student is an actor. Then what is the meaning of the term femininity and masculinity? It is a myth prevalent in this society that gender is a women's issue, but it is not. It is not a women's issue, it is a people's issue. Femininity does not exist in isolation from masculinity. That is, both are, are on the same pole, on the extreme ends of the pole. Gender relations are neither natural nor given. They are constructed to make unequal relations seem natural and can be naturalized under the due of socialization. Means these are not natural distinctions, but these are it is the uh, process of uh, genesis of gender that it has made unequal relations seem natural. While girls endure unwarranted social control, discrimination and domination, boys too suffer. They suffer from the stereotyping that exists in the patriarchal culture. They are discouraged from being emotional. Boys cannot cry. They, they can't be gentle. They can't be fearful. They are thrust into the role of breadwinners, protectors and barriers. They wish or they do not wish so. Means they have to be breadwinners, protectors and barriers, barriers of the society at any cost. This is the uh, emphasis of masculinity over them. Thus, unequal gender relations stunt the freedom of all individuals to develop their human capacities to their fullest because they have to be gender normative at any cost. Therefore, it is in the interest of both men and women, boys and girls, to liberate human beings from existing gender relations. 
gender and education what is the relationship between gender and education gender cut across all disciplines is basic to the construction of knowledge and has pervasive and wide ranging implications for human relations in general and education in particular means there is relationship between gender and education gender is the most pervasive form of inequality as it operates across all classes castes and communities yet while gender equality has been a key objective of education policy in india for so many decades it has lacked a critical edge in implementation means uh, there is gender inequality in the school society and everywhere <clears throat> there is a one more paradox here that is schooling which has supposed to narrow down the gap between gender inequality it actually reinforces the gendered inequality of socialization and social control in fact schools themselves create boundaries that limit possibilities doing gender is intimately linked to power dynamics within specific socio cultural contexts education works towards establishing and reinforcing gendered role expectations through various means as teachers we are suggesting our male students boys to acquire stem courses to go for uh, engineering courses and for army and so on and we as teachers are suggesting our female students to become good teacher or good nurse or in or at such education fed by and feeds into the existing gender disparate and restrictive oppressive ideals of the society <clears throat> then what is the concept of value education in present time in present scenario our world is facing a crisis due to the degradation of values so and 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 it must be an important goal of education to instill within students the universal human values as long as long back as gurudev rabindranath tagore has been quoted that it is very important his saying is very important and vital in present times too that is education must aim at the development of moral spiritual and ethical values and we should seek them in our heritage as well as in other cultures and civilizations means international understanding must be there and we have to be rooted to our culture and civilization too indian thoughts must be rooted in the ideals our nep 2020 has also said been has been said like this and self forth in the great writings and works of other sages poets and philosophers education is and cannot be never neutral and knowledge is always value laden knowledge cannot be value free and can either maintain or challenge the hegemonic order sometimes simultaneously it has been quoted from the saying of paulo freire in 1972 and we must aware about the term that is uh, the fact that is paulo freire has been considered as the father of critical pedagogy in which learners or students must have the um, you can say cognition and courage to challenge if there is something wrong happened around them okay and then gender and values is there any connection between gender and values yes because both are socially constructed concept <clears throat> the category of social gender and the world of values are closely connected and that the logic of this connection is quite unambiguous means they are connected both social gender and values represent well regulated and highly efficient transmission mechanisms the male and female roles formed by communities in traditional societies can be different but they are also similar in the sense that they closely fit into the space defined as a common set of values norms rules of behavior and cultural content while their rules and sanctions are of a collective quality means there is uh, both the terms gender and values have social context in their origin then what are the policies of indian uh, education system which has been said their sayings or recommendations on the inculcation of value education so there are many policies who has been set in the same manner there are five universal values specifically mentioned in our recent national education policy 2020 what are these five universal values these are truth peace non violence love and righteous conduct these are based on previously identified values in other government reports value based education is likely to help the nation fight against all kinds of pervading fanaticism ill will violence dishonesty corruption exploitation and drug abuse implementing value based education is a challenge in the present scenario in the present world then the in the line of this in the sink of this 
UGC also has published his, guideline, his guideline in May 2023 under the heading of Mulya Pravah 2.0. Mulya means values and it has been titled as Inculcation of Human Values and Professional Ethics in Higher Education Institutions, that is HEIs. What are the guidelines? And what, how to develop and why to develop human values? Because it is to develop deep respect towards fundamental duties and constitutional values among the students, irrespective of their gender, bonding with one's country and conscious awareness of the roles and responsibilities in a changing world, including universal human values, scientific temper, citizenship values, and also life skills. Life skills are also a new, you can recent topic in the in the educational sphere, and this is a buzzword in the educational sphere. So one must aware about the term life skills. <clears throat> and at last, how we can conclude this very topic? Gender and value education. So education for values aims at promoting broader capabilities, attitudes, and skills that matter not just in schools but also life beyond schools making the world a better place, not just for themselves, but also for their family, friends, colleagues, and others. So values and the inculcation of values can be do so. Education for values underpins the understanding that values are to be inculcated in students, not just for their own interest, but also for the common good reflecting the balance between individuals' interest, irrespective of their gender, and the larger interest of the society. So in this way, we can conclude the term, the, the topic, gender and value education so thank you thank you all good luck